Rashidin. We do not find any reference to that. So I would say that the originators of this uh, program should have inserted the importance of adherence to Quran and Sunnah and the best examples, the students of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if they were genuinely sincere in their quest to conscientize the people about the Dajjal and about all these other fitnas that are uh, prevalent in the world today. Why is it not our place to judge, Molana? But uh, would you say that it's very likely that, that, that this whole arrival series is perhaps a conspiracy in itself? That, that, that perhaps there's some ulterior motive here that, that, that put it across in a way that will captivate Muslims and perhaps non-Muslims as well. But then your subtle message, which is your objective at the end of the day, gets through and people don't even know what hit them. That's why I was so impressed with the answer from one of our students in school, you know, who watched it. Mm. And her comment was exactly this. The problem what happens is you get so caught up and it's done so convincingly, albeit with uh, cut and paste and selective uh, uh, information, that you start looking forward to what's the next sensational thing. And then this aspect is introduced so subtly. And if one is not well versed, or perhaps if one is not even aware about this different uh, dimension, a breakaway dimension from Islam, called whatever they want to call it, mm-hmm. then a person get, get, can get sucked into that trap. And I want to just make one, one comment here to all the young boys and girls who may be listening. Now, I'm not punting for Muslim schools, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but if you are attending a private school, school, right, private school, you are in grade 10, 11, and 12, and you are not attending a madrasa, do yourself one favor. Buy the Tashil series kitab that is printed by the Jamiatul Ulama, buy the Akaid, buy the Akaid and buy the history books, and buy the Tafsir books. I think it will be indispensable for your information if you have not got, if you haven't got sufficient time to real to real research, it will, as far as your belief such is concerned, I am very confident, with the grace of Allah, it will answer a lot of questions and it will dissipate from your minds a lot of doubt, especially after you viewed the series here, that aspect and that insert about the imams and all that, and uh, of course the disparaging remarks that are made against the Sahaba. Mm. Yeah, just one brief quotation, uh, basically to, to um, you know, exactly what Monali Yusuf Saab has echoed. There is a quotation in the Muqaddamah of Muslim Sharif also, that deen is an amana, it's a trust, fanduru amman ta'khuduna deenakum. I mean, that summarizes this whole thing up. Deen is a trust and an amana, fanduru amman ta'khuduna deenakum. So be very selective and be very conscious from whom you acquire your knowledge. Uh, so just to add on to the sentiments of Maulana, while you acquire the kitab, we're equally going to say sit at the feet of some scholar and, and learn the original, the traditional, the correct way, where it's a spiritual transmission so that you are guided on areas that you could potentially slip and fall. We go back to the lines. Uh, Brother in Roshni, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, uh, sister in KZN, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Looks like uh, maybe Telkom. Yeah. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam. Ji, Apa. Well, Maulana, I'm very, very concerned and worried because, you know, we've been told from small that music is going to be used. We don't need music to be told about our hadiths and whatever is coming. If we're going to be programmed with music, if Dajjal comes, we're going to follow Dajjal and look at his uh, miracles and everybody will be caught up. We don't need music for anything. Stay away from music. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Just as the Appa was speaking and, and an email came in and flashed on the screen that this documentary speaks of the evils of music but the whole time has background music. Uh, let's take a call uh, from a sister online three. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, assalamu alaikum to all the other Maulanas. Uh, Appa, briefly. Um, I find that um, uh, the one thing is uh, I feel that it actually seems to me to be very dangerous uh, that this person who acted as Dajjal in this program uh, what if Allah Ta'ala decides that Allah Ta'ala makes him the Dajjal in the coming and um, we make to add that Allah Ta'ala grants that we will not be around at that time. I mean, okay, okay, Apa. Jazakumullah for, for that Salaam comment. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Ma- ma- just one point to add here, and this is also throwing another dimension to this here is that often people argue that we need to read this and we need to view this to conscientize ourselves adequately to resist the temptation. But let's counter this argument with a very simple way. I mean, we have been told, and we don't have to wait for the error of the present uh, the emergence of the Jal. Mm-hmm. Who doesn't know today that the error and the fitna of today is interest? Who doesn't know that the temptation of today is immorality? 
Who doesn't know that the temptation of today is nudity? On the grounds of sheer information, who's resisting the temptation? Mm -hmm. So this is yet another deception and delusion from the devil that, okay, you know what? Innahu a'war wa inna rabbakum laysa bi a'war. He's one eye. So when I see him, I say, hey, there's the jar. Let's run from him. Let me, let me say, when I see the banker come in, I say, okay, here's the man with the interest. This is what my Nabi told me 1400 years. Let me run from him. No, I don't run from him. I welcome him. I salute him. I acknowledge him. I sit him down. I give him the best form of, 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 of entertainment in my office, conscious that he's going to propose before me a deal that the, the lifeline of which is interest. So we need to understand that we need deep-rooted faith and iman and conviction to save us in addition to the information, but sheer information exclusively is not sufficient deterrent. Yes, I see an email that says that uh, there are other series as well that, that have uh, a similar message and, and similar uh, negatives. The one is Age of the Jal and the other is the Revival series. My friends, uh, there might be many listening and say, okay, uh, we got the point, we, we understand uh, why this concern, we understand why we need to stay away. But tell us from an Islamic perspective then, the, where, where's the in-depth, intricate explanation? This is what people have in their minds in terms of when the Dajjal will come, how will he come, how does it fit in with the current context, is, is George Bush a Dajjal in, 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 in camouflage? Uh, we seem to have, for whatever reason, justified or not, this desire to want to know how that belief of ours is, is going to be placed in context in terms of current happenings. Is, is there a necessity for that? You know, wow, I, I think today there is this whole, because of sensationalism, because of the media, because of the movies that you do find, so people just seem to be attracted by that, although there is so many beautiful things, beautiful messages, beautiful books that a person can read that can be uh, very greatly inspired by the messages of those books, and it just seems that very unfortunate that we really need to actually go to the movies or look at something like that to feel that we have, uh, we need these type of things to be able to feel inspired. Uh, there is a beautiful hadith of our beloved Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when Nabi Karim Sallallahu said uh, that when the time of Qiyamah comes and you are busy planting a plant so then continue complete the planting of the plant because it, it also tells you that you know many a times um, uh, we, we feel that you know you have to have something sensational to be able to, to change your mind but even in the small things that if, if you could call it small the performance of five times daily salat, the, the, the beauty of the zikr of Almighty Allah, the beauty of the tilawat. We just seem to be able to, we, we miss the beauty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us in search of some, uh, some aspect that will come, that will you know, change our mind or give us complete satisfaction, which is very unfortunate, I think, in that particular way. I suppose the point is we don't need to know every minute detail. We, we, we need to, to be satisfied with what has been mentioned in Quran and what has been mentioned in the Ahadith and, and the little or, or that the ulama have expounded in that regard and, and leave ambiguous what Allah and His Nabi have left ambiguous. Uh, that's the exact point, Moran, I wanted to mention. And again, this is a, a, a viewpoint that we learn from our scholars. Abhimu ma abhamahu Allah. Any person familiar with tafsir will understand, understand this is a common repeated phrase. So, you know, and, and you take for example the incident of Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. Now, the element of sensationalizing it is, it's, it's an incident that is packed, jam-packed with guidance, with direction, with uh, advice to people. But then a person will end and then say, but uh, did Yusuf alayhi salam then wed Zulaikha? <laughs> My brother, you have an entire chapter that has everything to do with guidance and so profound. Uh, and then you want to find out. Now, Allah hasn't touched this. And the scholars say that Allah hasn't touched that aspect which are not connected to the guidance of man. And Allah has mentioned everything that is connected to the guidance of man. Again, you come in Surah Kahf, you speak about the youth and everything, and then comes to the aspect of sensationalizing it. Where did they live? Where did they die? Let's leave it after they entered the cave. What happened? To the point that Allah has discussed, and this is a repeated phrase by the scholars. And again, if we access the information of the scholars, we'll pick up, what Allah has left ambiguous. I mean, the very famous hadith of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in Allah فَرَضَ فَرَائِضَ فَلَا تُضَيِّعُوهَا وَحَدَّ حُدُودًا فَلَا تَعْتَدُوهَا وَسَكَتَ عَنْ أَشْيَاءَ رَحْمَةً لَكُمْ مِنْ غَيْرِ نِسَانٍ فَلَا تَبْحَثُوا عَنْهَا I mean, what does this hadith say? In Allah فَرَضَ فَرَائِضَ Allah has ordained certain things. وَحَدَّ حُدُودًا And Allah has stipulated parameters and boundaries. فَلَا تَعْتَدُوهَا Do not trespass and transcend those boundaries. And then to quote the hadith, وَسَكَتَ عَنْ أَشْيَاءَ And Allah has been silent about certain things. مِنْ غَيْرِ النِّسْيَانٍ Without forgetfulness. رَحْمَةً